<coughs> Each year, the United States government gives away a little under $40 billion in financial aid to nations around the world. This is 20 times more money than it took to build the Trump International Hotel and Tower in Chicago, which clocked in at a cost of $1.8 billion in construction. Now the purpose of this aid varies from country to country. Sometimes it's for military use, and other times for humanitarian purposes. But regardless of the intention, the negative results remain the same, consistent, both here and abroad. By providing a never-ending stream of foreign assistance, we are weakening the eight nations that we aim to help, strengthening tyrants and harming America. In 2012, the continent of Africa received $12 billion from the United States. But just as in years past, the aid did nothing to improve their situation. As well-intentioned as the aid may be, it can have the disastrous effect of encouraging dependency. By providing items that could otherwise be produced within the country, we're encouraging unemployment, which in turn increases the need for more foreign assistance. In a Wall Street Journal article titled, Why Foreign Aid is Hurting Africa, Zambia native Moyo Dambisa writes, quote, Say there's a mosquito net maker in small town Africa. Say he employs 10 people who together manufacture 500 nets a week. Typically, these 10 employees support upward of 15 relatives each. A Western government-inspired program generously supplies the afflicted region with 100,000 free mosquito nets. This promptly puts the mosquito net manufacturer out of business. And now, his 10 employees can no longer support their 150 dependents. In a couple years, most of the donated nets will be torn and useless. Now, there's no mosquito net maker to go to. They'll have to get more aid. And African governments once again get to abdicate their responsibilities. End quote. Likewise, if produce is sent to Africa, then local farmers may go out of business as a result. Another sad fact is that the financial aid that is sent does not always reach those that it's intended for. Northwestern, politi Northwestern University political economist Jeffrey Winters estimated that more than 50% of World Bank aid is lost to corruption in some African countries. President Olusun Obasanjo of Nigeria announced in 2002 that African leaders have stolen at least $140 billion from their people in the decades since independence. Something that most Americans may not realize, and I certainly didn't realize until I wrote this paper and did this presentation, is that the countries that receive the monetary aid are required to pay it back. And right now, Africa cannot afford the debt it is accruing after it accepts this aid. According to a July 26, 2014 article on thisisafrica.com, Africa spends $21 billion a year on debt payments often following irresponsible loans. Personally, I think that Congressman Ron Paul put it best when he said, foreign aid is taking money from the poor people of a rich country and giving it to the rich people of a poor country. <laughs> I'd now look, like to look at some of the negative effects that federal foreign aid has on the United States. First of all, America cannot afford to continue giving money to developing nations. Currently, the U.S. debt is over $18 trillion. To put this in perspective is a two-scale illustration of what $16.4 trillion looks like. Each pallet, each tiny cube that you see, holds $100 million on it. Now please note the accurate size of the Statue of Liberty as well as the crane, the semi-truck, the billboard, and you. <laughs> <laughs> now we also have our own poverty issues to deal with. In 
In January of 2014, the, the number of homeless Americans was 578,424. And in 2015, federal funding to address homelessness was $4.5 billion. Now please compare this with the $20 billion that was sent to Africa in 2012. Another thing that most people uh, might not realize, as I said before, and this is also something I didn't realize at the time, is that mandatory foreign aid is unconstitutional. One website I visited illustrated it this way. There are good reasons why the U.S. Constitution does not allow our government to send taxpayer money overseas as foreign aid. One of the best is that coerced charity is not charity at all, but theft. If someone picks your pocket, donates the money to a good cause, it does not negate the original act of theft. As well, financial favoritism breeds hatred for America. Israel and Palestine, the Palestinian people, have been embroiled in conflict for many years. Israel is one of the main benefactors of U.S. military aid. Proportioned out as a daily rate, we give $10.2 million a day in military aid to Israel and $0 a day in military aid to the Palestinians. Osama bin Laden cited our support for Israel as one of the reasons for the attacks on September 11th. Part of his manifesto reads, Some American writers have published articles under the title, On What Basis Are We Fighting? The answer is very simple, because you attacked us, and continue to attack us. The British handed over Palestine with your help and your support to the Jews who have occupied it more than 50 years, years overflowing with oppression, tyranny, crimes, killing, expulsion, destruction, and devastation. And of course, there is no need to explain and prove the degree of American support for Israel. But we don't have to give up hope in helping these countries in more healthier and productive ways. Currently, there are over 1.5 million nonprofits registered in the United States alone. Private assistant organizations like Doctors Without Borders, Catholic Relief Services, and Food for the Hungry International are just a few examples of non-government related humanitarian organizations. And unlike government aid, with these, you can be sure of where your money is going. And also, like government, unlike government aid, you have the freedom to stop donating whenever you want to without having to worry about legal repercussions. Another way to help is by purchasing goods that are made in developing nations and then donating those goods back to the countries they came from. The same goes for food grown by the country's local farmers. As more produce is purchased from the farmers, more employees will be needed to grow the food. And we have something like this on our own campus. Just World Goods is a free trade store in Lindner Tower. Half of all proceeds go toward the organization sponsoring the product purchase, and the other half to a scholarship fund to send Judson students on a missions trip. The amount of money that is donated from this country is a testament to the huge hearts that we all have here in America. However, if that money is forcibly taken from us and then given away by a government that increasingly treats public opinion as irrelevant, and it's merely a forced donation, something that we should all have a problem with, it should be our choice where this money goes, and if we want to give anything at all. As Americans, we pride ourselves on our freedom, so we should be able to exercise that freedom when it comes to donating our hard-earned money. By ending mandatory federal aid, we will strengthen our country, which will, by example, strengthen the developing nations of the world. that the donors can 
take back their money whenever they want to if they don't like what they see. Um, they'll have to act in, in, in a more transparent manner. Um, as well, like, I know that um, we've been trying to audit the Federal Reserve here in America, and it's never happened. Like, there's no transparency here in the government. And uh, there's a lot more distrust than um, I think that just because, merely because you, the free will exercise and who you want to donate to um, encourages confidence in, in that organization, there is no guarantee. It's, it's, a, it's a, essentially a private organization, and I don't even know what goes on in Judson's administration. I don't know what goes on in American Red Cross's administration, but I have faith that Judson's doing the right thing with all our tuition, all that stuff. So. Yeah, but Jim Jones wasn't exactly a pinnacle of... I'm sorry? Jim Jones and Guyana and all the people who took their lives, and this was a non-profit, so... Well, I, I right, you can't know. Have... So what would be a way to know, or at least, I don't say police, but to guarantee to help make sure the money does go where it should? I'm, I'm no fan of the government taking my money either. Right, right. The Illinois Army is just doing such a great job right now. So, you know. I think uh, <laughs> it's, um, as far as what can increase transparency, and uh, like I'm not, I don't know a whole lot about laws and, and like transparency laws with corporations and uh, what's public and what's private, privately shared information. I really don't know the regulations to that. My focus was just on solely. Uh, governmental aid and why it's wrong that they take, and, and the fact that the aid, the aid money, um, I know that if I donate to the Red Cross, I know that that aid money is not going to be put into a bomb, and then as military aid, send somewhere to blow someone up. Um, I can be sure that, uh, well, maybe not sure, as much as, as sure as any of us can be, I suppose, that if I give a homeless man a dollar. I don't know what he's going to do with it. I don't know what I, what the Salvation Army is going to do with it, to the extent that there are no guarantees. Now, I do feel that what I said earlier, Stan, that there's more transparency just because uh, it's they have they can't take money from us. They they're reliant on donation, uh, whereas the government has that power because it's a tax. Um, so you can be thrown in jail, you know. Perhaps another angle is we know this doesn't work. Yeah. So perhaps we try this. Yeah, and that that was the purpose of the alternatives nonprofits. Uh, I, I get what you're saying though that maybe we need more information on how this can be uh, maybe a guarantee that it's safer. But um, I don't know how deep I could go with that um, and convince somebody. Uh, Dr. Well, just, just as a follow up, there are books and articles on this identifying helpful practices as well as harmful practices that end up undermining the community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could focus like what I help. So the research is there and I think asking questions of uh, not only the national or international organizations but also your churches, right? Mm -hmm. Looking as, into yes. like what, what goes into it, where does the money go, um, what's the long term vision as opposed to are we just pumping I came, you know, I was living on the West Coast for a bit. There's an issue with that with Skid Row, where a lot of homeless are all the time. People come bring food, but it became a problem um, where you need to look for something deeper, and that's where we can our efforts can go into. Jordan, I'm sorry, do you have a question? Um, so necessarily, you said that you could go to jail if you like stop paying and other things. But that would be one of those legal repercussions. Yeah, because it's it's yeah. Um, it's a tax. I mean, it's like not paying your taxes um, because that money goes toward foreign aid. It's it's, it's mandatory, so it's not asked as a donation. Um, as so that so it's it's basically looked at what will happen to you if you don't pay your tax. That's what. It is. Um, also, there was an article that I personally read that there are homeless that choose to be homeless because they want to be homeless. Mm -hmm. Either they're being lazy or they just don't want to be a part of society. 
So how would you, just I want to see your own personal opinion, like how, what would they? I think that's an argument for this, in that um, we need to go deeper than just throwing things at people and say, now you're better, uh, when they don't even want. Um, to, to engage, if, if people, I mean, you come into kind of a, a gray zone with mental health at a certain point as well, um, where they don't want help. I, when I was living in LA, there was a guy always walked around holding on his pants. He didn't have a belt. He always, and I thought, what a miserable way to walk around every day. His pants are four sizes too big and he can't, and he has to do this all the time. So I always carried an extra belt with me. And, uh, sorry, I get, it chokes me up. But I pulled over and I offered it to him. He said no. So I left. We want to help. But they don't want it, they don't have to take it. All right, a very important topic that we all need to think about. Thank you. As we conclude, I will take the liberty of reminding Dr. Buckley Hughes that Jim Jones and Guyana happened before any of these people were born. I realize that. Jim who? One of the dangers of being yeah. teachers is yeah. forgetting to do the counting. All right. Thank you, everyone. Uh, it's been a good conference, and uh, wish you all a good, safe 